start talking about the Fortran package manager. So as Tiziano said, I'm Brad Richardson. Uh, my co-authors on the paper are Andre and Milan, who uh, we've heard from Milan earlier, and Andre, I believe, is giving a talk here shortly as well. Um, but I also want to thank everybody else who has contributed to the Fortran package manager. We've had several other contributors, several people uh, contributing, uh, you know, testing it out and giving us feedback and, and things like that. So, so thank you to everybody who, who's been helping on this effort. Um, so just a brief outline. Um, so what is, what are the problems that a package manager tries to solve? How does FPM solve them? I'm going to try and go through a quick live demo. Uh, and we'll talk about some future development and then hopefully have a little bit of time for questions. Um, so what are the problems that a typical package manager tries to solve? So most newer languages have, have some sort of tool that tries to, to accomplish most of these goals in one user-friendly tool. And so they want to manage any external dependencies. So how how do I depend on some external libraries? How do I build my project? How can I test my project? So do I support unit tests or, or some sort of a testing framework? Um, how do I just start a new project? And then how do I find any available libraries so that I can depend on them that I might want to use? Um, and so FPM has taken a lot of inspiration from uh, Rust's Cargo and Haskell's Stack tools, but there are several other languages that have package managers that also work, again, quite similarly. So how does uh, FPM try and solve these problems? So if we're trying to manage dependencies, um, basically there's only a few things that really should be necessary from a user perspective. What's the name of the dependency you need? Where do you find it? And what version do you want? And so uh, managing dependencies in FPM is basically as simple as in the configuration file for your project, uh, which is a TOML formatted file. You just list the dependencies that you have with a name, where to find it, and optionally some, some way of specifying a version. Um, for for uh, de dependencies that are stored in Git repositories, you can use tags, uh, revision to specify a specific commit, and I don't show it here, but you can also specify a branch. Um, what about building? So FPM will build your project with a single command, FPM build. Uh, there are some assumptions that are made about organization and naming conventions, and that all of your source code is in modules. But for the most part, if you can, these are pretty common conventions in most projects. So for the most part, FPM build will just work. Um, it will fetch any of the dependencies that you specified. It will scan through your sources and figure out how to build them all in one single command. Um, what about unit testing? So FPM supports a, a simple, basically just a simple type of an interface where if you have a program in the test folder called main.f90, it will compile and run that, that program for you. Um, so that, that's just the basic place where if you want to have unit tests, put them there, and FPM test will run those tests for you. Uh, additionally, you can specify additional test programs if you want to in the fpm.toml file, which is FPM's config file. Uh, there, there's additional information on how to do that in the uh, packaging guide, which I won't quite have time to get into here. Um, so how do I create a new project? Again, this is, aims to be as simple as possible for a user. The command FPM new and the name of the project you'd like. And optionally, you can tell it I'd like it to have an executable and, and or I'd like it to have some tests. And it will just create a basic skeleton project for you with uh, the very basic FPM TOML file. A module with a single subroutine that just says, hello, your new project name. Uh, optionally, uh, if you ask it to create a, an executable, it just creates a simple program that just calls that provided subroutine. And then optionally, uh, a test program that just sends, just prints out, you know, put some tests here. Um, what about uh, finding other libraries? Um, 
that this is functionality that hasn't quite been implemented yet. We're still in kind of a prototype phase at this point. So this, this hasn't quite been implemented yet. Um, but the, the basic idea is you would be able to, from the command line, just FPM search for something and FPM would go check its own registry for, for packages with matching names or descriptions and, and report those to you. So you can uh, figure out what kind of libraries are out there to help you solve the problem you're looking for. Um, and so now, uh, hopefully the demo gods will smile upon us and we can run through a quick demo. So uh, very first thing we're gonna wanna do is create a new project. So FPM new, and I'll give it the name uh, Fortran Con 2020. Uh, we'd like it to include an executable and a test. And we can see that now it has created a folder for us named with that name. And there is a project in here now. And so now, um, as has kind of become the, the go-to question when it comes to, you know, starting a new language, what, how fast do we go from uh, blank slate to hello world? We can now see with a couple of commands, we have gone from no project at all to a working hello world example in FPM. So how did we accomplish that? So let's open up uh, an editor and we'll take a look at uh, what's in here. So first thing that we mentioned, uh, I created an FPM.toml file for us. It gives us the, the name of the project um, and some basic metadata, uh, which is basically just template, template it out so you can fill this stuff out. Um, most of this stuff isn't actually looked at yet by FPM, but at some point when we get to a, a, a centralized re registry repository for projects, we'll, we'll want to start looking at some of this, some of this information. Um, so, so it just goes ahead and fills it in there for you. Um, next, um, that, uh, that basic module. So it just creates a basic module uh, with just a subroutine that says, print hello FortranCon 2020. And additionally, uh, it created a program for us because we specified the uh, with executable option. And so it just creates a, a simple program, just uses that module and calls that subroutine. And finally, uh, a test program. So with that test program there, we can run FPM test and it just, you know, print, print, put some tests in here. So, now with the basic, uh, basic Hello World program here, how would we now add a dependency? So for an example, our, our module here is just printing stuff to the screen, but maybe we'd like to have some, some sort of a function that uh, generates this greeting into a string, and we'd like to use our own custom string, uh, string uh, type. So, I've prepared a little bit of this ahead of time. So we will copy from there to, so we'll copy over a, a new FPM and we see uh, we've added uh, the dependency section. We're gonna use the ISO varying string module from my own repository, version 1.0 and then so we'll copy over again the uh, module and we'll also copy over the new program and take a look at those. So, so now we've added a function. Or we've, uh, we're, we're using that new module that we're now gonna import. Uh, we've added a new function that given uh, a, a character variable creates a string with the, with the greeting. And then in our, in the updated version of our program, we're gonna also use the, uh, use that new module from, the, from that package and, and use the uh, put line routine from there to, to output. So now when we, now we want to run our program again. So we just say FPM run again, and you can see it's going to go and fetch that new dependency for us now. 
compile that new dependency for us as well into a library and link that with our new, with our, uh, with our new program. And now we can still see hello FortranCon 2020. So now we've added a new dependency. So um, one thing we, we just did was we, we created this new function. And if we're following some testing best practices, we're going to want to test those. So let's copy again from some prior priorly prepared. Um, if you have, if you're creating a package and there are some dependencies that, that somebody who's going to use your library isn't necessarily going to need just to use your library. For example, I need something for testing purposes. Um, you can, you can specify dev dependencies and users of your library won't, won't need to fetch these as well. So, so there's a way of uh, specifying things that you'll need for your project, but others users of your library won't need it. Um, and so I'm going to use the vegetables testing framework to, to write my tests. So let's copy over the uh, test and the update to the test program and take a look at those. So I'm uh, using the vegetables testing framework to write some tests in here. And then now my, my main test program is going to be uh, running the tests from there. And so now when I run FPM test, it will now go and fetch vegetables. Vegetables has an additional dependency. So it's going to go and also fetch that for us as well and then go ahead and finish compiling and running the test for us. And now our tests pass, and now we have a working implementation with some tests of a brand new project in roughly five-ish minutes. So let's jump back into our presentation. Um, future development. So at this stage, FPM is still in very much a prototype phase. Um, it's currently risk written in Haskell, um, but there we have plans to go ahead and rewrite that uh, our implementation in Fortran, kind of using our prototype to help us develop the libraries that we're that are going to be necessary to really do this properly. Um, so with, with that prototype, it really is going to enable us to, to really re-implement a proper implementation of FPM in Fortran. Many other languages have their package managers implemented in their own language as well. And so we thought that Fortran would be, it would be good for us to do, try and do that with Fortran as well. And we'd also like to put together a centralized registry. So you don't necessarily have to know the, the Git repository or a URL for, for a specific package that you want to depend on and, and a centralized place for publishing packages and uh, searching for, for existing packages. And so uh, you can learn more, get involved, try it out, all that fun stuff over at the GitHub page at Fortran Lang FPM. So please, if you are at all interested, go check that out and give it a try and let us know what you think. And now um, you, can find, you can get a hold of me at uh, everythingfunctional at protonmail.com. My GitHub is everythingfunctional and Twitter at everything funked. And of course, uh, go and talk to us about it at the, at the FPM Lang uh, repository for FPM. So with that, I will go ahead and stop sharing and hopefully if there are any questions. Thank you very much, Brett. Um, yes, there are indeed some questions. Uh, right. One was the, basically it goes into the direction um, when you want to get dependencies right for building or also for the side what you can build in parallel, for example, uh, you have to parse Fortran. Yes. At least partially. Yes. And so far, it seems that the only thing which is able to parse Fortran correctly are the compilers, or <laughs> basically the front end there. Yeah. So what's, do you have already solution there? Will FPM include a Fortran front-end parser at, at some point, or are you going to rely on the compilers? Um, at this point, we have a very 
simplified parser that is doing a little bit of parsing of the, the Fortran source code just to figure out what modules are there and, and, and what their dependencies are. It, it of course is not nearly as robust as the compilers are gonna be, but it, it, it seems to be working well enough so far to kind of get us far enough to, to figure out how to build most projects. Okay. Um, then we have other questions about um, version control system integration. Uh -huh. Is there anything planned there or does it require it? At the moment, you can simply do it in every um, repository, right? So there's no requirement for having you use a Git or... Right. So long term, uh, we'll have a centralized registry repository where, you, where you'll be, where basically you'll just end up uh, publishing tarballs of your source files with the FPM config file. So at some point, we will not have any requirements for a specific uh, version control system. Right now, Git was just the most convenient and the most popular, so we just kind of went with that for the prototype version. But but yeah, at some point we'll uh, we'll kind of remove that restriction that you use any version control system at all. Okay, and then I think the final question for now, I think the others we can take um, offline then, is um, what about existing packages? Are there uh -huh. any plans to also pr provide in, in the central repository maybe um, a wrapper around existing packages? where you simply drop on with F, maybe the FPM configuration for that package yeah. to make it easier to, to integrate them in your, in your um, actual packages. So yeah, and so part of, part of the answer to that question goes to a, a functionality that I didn't have time to, to touch on, which is uh, right now FPM will support uh, custom build scripts uh, or make files. So if you have an existing package, it will actually be possible for you to just drop to kind of make some simple modifications to, to an existing make file or, or create a new uh, pretty standardized uh, new uh, compile script. And, and then F, that package will be usable by FPM. So I, I think we have, we have plans to make uh, migration in, of any existing packages into FPM as simple as possible. Okay. And speaking about simple as possible, how does FPM work if you have no internet connection? <laughs> well, it won't be able to go and fetch your dependencies, obviously, if you, if you don't have uh, an internet connection. But if you already have downloaded those, those somewhere, right now FPM supports a, spec a dependency specification where you can specify a path on your machine. So it would, in theory, be possible to use FPM without, without a, uh, an internet connection. Great, good to hear. I think all those behind our restrictive firewall are glad to hear it. Uh -huh. And uh, we have another, uh, well, I think this, this is something we can take into the break um, because it touches a broader subject, um, not just the FPM. I mean, FPM, this kind of like motivates people to write small libraries, which is cool because you can share them. You can easily test the, the simple things. But this also kind of like fosters the problem that in the end, one project needs a thousand other uh, packages to build and to run, which of course can cause kind of like this avalanche effect if, if one package fails to build or is unmaintained. Um, do you, what, what is your idea on, on that? Or what is your experience on, on that problem? Um, so that is a problem that, I don't know that any particular language is solved particularly well or fully, right? If, if you depend on external libraries, then you depend on external libraries and you'll, you'll always be at the mercy of things that go on there. Generally, you'll, you'll try and, you know, fix your, try and limit the scope of those dependencies and try and fix the versions of them that you're going to use and, and test out before you upgrade to new versions and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a hard problem. It has been tackled in various ways, but I don't, as far as I'm, I understand, there's not one silver bullet solution for how do you, given a, pro, a large project that has lots of dependencies, how do you keep track of those and manage them? It's, it's a hard problem. Yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much, Brad, for the thank interesting you. talk.